All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. It's two. It's a little bit after two. Um, so anybody else who is going to be joining, um, I'll try to catch you up. Because I know there's a couple who want to see this. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to get started here and go over that this is a new technique that I haven't shown yet. Um, but it will entail a couple of things that I've gone over in a couple other videos. So I'm excited about this one. Um, beforehand, if you want to follow along with this whale, um, you can actually sketch it out in pencil, uh, cover, cover it in, in a Sharpie marker, and then um, go along with these steps. The Sharpie marker will stay intact, and you'll be able to see through the entire image the entire time. So... What I'm doing right now is I'm mixing a really, really light gray on my can on my uh, palette, really up here at this, uh, up here at the top here. Um, but primarily in the sky is gonna be white and just little pinches of gray here and there. But it's gonna be a lot of water, a lot of using water and. Um, kind of blending things together on here. Color-wise, I'm using white, uh, brown, yellow, blue, and black. Um, maybe a little bit of red. Everything that you see on my palette here. And um, you, know, you can use accordingly if you don't want to stick with some of the colors. We're going to really mute them down a lot. So I mix a little bit of a gray. I left it on the brush and I'm adding white to the brush so that I can keep it really, really light on the canvas here. And we're going to start with the sky. And add a little bit of water to my brush. Just mix it in. I don't want a whole lot of color showing through, just a little bit of gray, not too much. But as you can see, my line is still showing through underneath the sky. I'm not using a super large brush. I'm just using this size here. The next one down from the one I'm usually using that's really large. And if you'd like to continue your edges as you are doing this, feel free. But if you um, don't want to do that yet and want to do something else later with the edges, that's fine. I might put a different frame around the edges for this one. Yeah, just little patches of gray here and there in the back. I don't need a whole lot. And more working with water to push around the paints and still see through them. I'm gonna add some white there. working around the image too, but you don't have to. If you want to go right through there, you can. I can still see those lines. From that kind of gray area, we're going to go straight to a dark blue. So, um, like I said, we're going to mute down these colors with this painting more so than any of the other ones. Um, there are times when you do want to mute them down with some black and kind of make it a little bit more of a dull color. This is one of those cases. So I'm adding a little bit of black to my blue and then white to kind of bring it back up. But this is going to be the darkest blue of the piece and it's actually going to go right up here in this quadrant. But I still want to keep it more flowy with some water. So a little bit of water on the brush.
the style of painting is pretty particular. I'm just going to follow that line in there. It's going to be the top half of the water. trails off about right there and if you lose that line there we can always come back later and um, start uh, outlining it again and putting things back how they were but that's the darkest portion of this painting so we don't have to really worry too much if you lost that a little bit what I'm gonna do now is take and add a lot of white to that same blue To bring it up, that's going to be the next layer of water. Still adding water to the canvas there to keep it pretty thin the next layer down is going to be a little lighter than that so I'm adding white to that color. This is gonna actually help you also understand how to mix colors when you are um, going from color to color. So instead of me continuing to mix in this splotch right here, I took it off to the side, I added white, and then I took that one off to the side and I added white. That's how you bring your colors up or take them down. You don't wanna really just keep mixing the same color in the same area the whole way through, you really want to take it off to the side and just start making it lighter. Otherwise, you're going to end up with kind of the same color each time. So each time that I, I go off to the side of that color and I just bring it up higher. It's an easier way to mix than having to struggle with it a lot. So I'm taking this up higher. My brush is pretty wet, so that's why I haven't really dipped back into the water. But if you need to, you can. I'm going to take this down a little bit because I don't want them to be on the same level. So up here, I'm going to go a little darker. Always be aware of your surroundings on your painting. Things that line up and are consistent with each other, things that are not, you can always go back in and adjust accordingly. Alright, so I took that down, we're going to keep this up. I just took that white off to the side of that, that color and kept taking it higher with the white. And now, I'm just going to dip in the white exactly with the same brush, a little bit of water, and this bottom plane here with the water is going to be the lightest layer, it's the lightest level of water. It's almost white, but not quite. So I'm just going to keep adding the white to it, make sure with the water so you can see through to your lines that you have of your images that we're gonna also fill later on.
you have paint that's really thin um, already, like my white paint is really thin, so I really don't have to keep adding water a whole lot. It's already watered down. Um, work with that. Uh, <laughs> it's becoming redundant that I say this, but knowing your paints and knowing your brushes and how everything works together is, is a key factor to to all of this. So we got our four levels of water here. We go dark blue, medium blue, lighter blue, almost white. If you want to add a little bit higher, you could even let this dry and go over it one more time if you wanted, but um, I think I'm alright with where it is. I might slightly take this level here down just a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit by adding this blue to it. But I'm not going to do the whole way through. I'm actually just going to carry from here all the way across so I don't go too dark. And we've got our three levels. And immediately I'm just going to come straight down here to the bottom. Just doing all the background right now. All of, all of the background. Um, this is going to be the mix of white and yellow and brown. But again, I want this really muted, so um, don't worry about keeping anything bright. This is just background colors, and the really, this style is just very kind of it's not, I don't want to say dull, but it's along those lines. It's just real, real light. So this back hill, I'll make the darkest. And again, when you're mixing your colors, Come to the side with the white to bring it up higher. Side of that brown that you made. Add a little bit more brown to it actually. Yeah. I'm gonna add white to that. Take it higher. And higher. The bottom one is going to come up a little bit lighter. The one in the middle is just going to be the lightest, so I'm going to add white to that. Still see my lines through it because really wet brush. So we got our three levels down there. Um, if you want, this doesn't have to be as dark as it is can bring that up a little bit with some white. can mute these down as far as you want. Come back into this one. And now this one back here could be whatever you like. Um, I'm kind of going to go maybe in between all of these. And make it something like this. Um, so a little bit of that blue was added to this to kind of take it back. 
a little bit that dark blue ever so slightly just adjusting each color to keep it you know keep it down keep it so it's not too loud not too loud of a color at all throughout this entire piece um so let's come up here to the whale and um after i whoops after i fix a little piece here that i kind of missed There's that part right there. All right. Um, your well can be whatever color you'd like to do. Um, I would keep it really light along with what, you know, what's going on here. You could go with maybe a muted, really dark gray, but it's, you know, super watered down. You go with a light gray like you did in your sky. Um, you can go with um, maybe a darker version of blue or something in between. Um, really it's up to you what kind of color you'd like to do I think I like the dark gray kind of idea since it is kind of the main subject of the piece so I'm going to water down my dark gray a lot I might just spread this through the whole thing Long strokes are good if you don't want any splotches. And I'm actually just carrying it the rest of the way with water. Not dipping in the paint anymore. Water's going to carry this all the way. Too much water is going to cause it to actually drip down the canvas, so be sparing with how much water you add. If you want to take a trip down to a smaller brush, you can do that. Because I have some lines showing through that I don't really want them to show through, I will add a little bit more paint here to cover that up. You see I got a drip over here. That's alright though. Just gonna take another brush here. Take it right out. Added white to the brush so I could put back the background in there. If you feel like going a little lighter on the belly, you can feel free to do so. I'm 
I'm just gonna take that extra strip out that I did. Oop. Got all kind of things happening on here today. <laughs> Let's finish off the tail up top here. Again, I'm going to use a little bit more so I can get the definition of the tail that I would like to have. A little bit more of the paint. Got our whale, we got our background. Um, we can come up here and maybe work on these water drops that are flowing out from the spout. That's gonna be another kind of dark blue, but it's gonna actually entail a few different blues, so we'll kind of splatter in there. In a different way so what I want to do is mix mix kind of that dark blue and then bring it up to light again the blue the black and the white more of the white than anything a little bit of water and I'm just gonna kind of dab it on there real fast whatever brush you're comfortable with whether it's this size or a smaller size what I'm going to do is keep the dark areas, uh, I'll cover it all in the light first, and then the darker areas are going to be kind of around the top. And if you want, you can kind of splotch it here and there, just give it some texture. Lighten that up. And then splotch it with the dark. So I'll take a break from up there for now, come down here to the different sea life. Um, I'll take some yellow into that, that dark blue mixture a little, and then really take it up with some white. We end up with something like that right there. Still a muted tone, but it's going to give some, a little bit of color here. So if you want to go smaller brush or this brush, you're just going to hit the seaweed. Just 
Same thing over here. And the seaweed. gonna make these fish kind of even darker than the whale so black and white to make a dark gray if you want to add a little blue to it for some color you can and I'm gonna do something a little different than what I have there these might look like the little goldfish that you can get from the store A tail, tail, thin body to large body. You can put as many as you like. Um, you can put two over here, you can put three, you could do a whole school of them, you can do some over here. Totally up to you how you want to add your fish. Um, the starfish, I kind of want to make it a mixture of a red and a yellow and a white really toned down with some water the crab I want to make more of an idea of a pink so Make sure the red and the white just is something really super light. Really, really, really super light. I'm kind of mixing over top of other colors I made to keep it muted. It's a little dark. I'll take it a little bit higher with some white. It's a lot of white. <laughs> There we go. Nothing really needs to stick out with this painting. It's just kind of, it's there, it's got some color, but it's not overwhelming the piece. clam I almost want to make it a purple so to my pink I'm gonna add a blue I'm gonna come in here with this still using the water um, water's gonna tone it take it back and thin it out and make it work chest um the chest i'm gonna make kind of a dark brown so brown more brown than blue when you're mixing this darker brown or you could take brown and a little bit of black to keep it dull i'm gonna take some water and a little bit of that that color keep it back here with the with the treasure chest treasure chest <laughs> I go slightly darker on the side of the chest just to show that it is further back Still using water. But thin that out. And 
I think I'm just going to go with uh, maybe some of that green and then some black to add to the anchor back here. Small brush. So everything can kind of have its own individual color. Nothing has to be the same, except for those two fish over there. And the seaweed. And at this point, I'm ready to kind of go back over and reline everything that needs the, the line again. So there is kind of a method with even that, with the lines. I'm going to add water to my black paint. And I'm going to use my really thin liner brush. There's certain points where you want to have thicker lines and thinner lines. <coughs> Something that's real bold um, in, in this piece is kind of where everything's going to be thicker. And then something that's not as quite as bold is where things are going to be a little bit thinner. So something like the whale's head is going to be thicker lines that go into thinner lines. So this is a good practice for your hand for um, going back and forth between the two. And you can, I, you can even use a marker if you're more comfortable with a marker, but I'm going to go with this liner brush, really good brush for, for this kind of thing. Um, I'm going to start out real small by pressing not even hard at all, just real light. And as I bring it up, same thing with this I'm going to do with the whale. So it's going to come thicker when I drag the liner brush a little bit heavier along those those lines if you want to switch between brushes like going from liner brush to a little bit bigger brush to make that happen too that's another method you can use switching up the sizes is what makes this piece stick out a lot I'm gonna go real thin as I bring it back down This is like making a statement with painting. Real bold up top here. So I'm just applying a little more pressure than usual up in this area and then back to just drill on the tip of the brush and wispy line I'm gonna line these um, waves as well I'll include that in there these I might stick all the same size. Um, they're not really bold or too thin, it's just kind of there, so. Not everything has to be making any statement. Just the main, the main things. I'm just gonna drag a line. My black paint is not wet enough.
each wave is going to get a line, each level. Each level of water. If you want to do this with a sharpie, like I said, you could do it with a sharpie. A uh, sharpie marker and a sharpie pen would be what you'd be switching between. Not everybody's comfortable with the brush doing these real thin lines. So I'm going to switch here for a second for the whale. I really want this line to be pretty bold, so real bold line for the head. Really got to thin out my paint here. I've been showing this the last few days if you use your pinky on a dry canvas and kind of guide your hand. It's easier to make these lines. Keep them steady. there I'm still gonna work on you know switching up the sizes so I'm working on the very tip of the brush again if you want to switch down to a smaller size brush you can do that Right now I'm going to work on where the larger details are going to be, so definitely on the fin. And I think on maybe the side of the tail. switch back down to my real small liner brush here
if you have to reset your brush at any point in time, you can always rinse it out, dry it off, come back into your paint, reset it. Kind of hitting everything that I painted over that I still want to be in front. And you come down to the anchor. Same difference, you know, you can still add some spots are thicker than others. Coming back to our Minecraft video with some of these 3D effects or what, what would seem to be 3D. Showing the other side of that bo the uh, treasure chest there. down to the clam Over to the starfish. You can add details to each thing as you like. If you want to add um, the lines on the shell of the clam, the eyes, if you want to put eyes on any of these. Depends on what you're painting this for. I'm gonna put some dots on a little starfish here. Hit the fish here next.
eyes on there for them. You can even throw some bubbles in here if you want, just little circles. You don't have to finish them completely off. They can just be little C's. All different sizes, small, large. Now for the seaweed. It's real good practice because there's a lot of lining in here. We're gonna get the sand. Still switch it up if you like. Thicker in some spots, thinner in others. kind of letting it all fade out at certain points um just letting it do what it does you know the less paint on the brush or the more dry it gets as you're lining it's going to start to do some some fading and i like to work with that and let it happen back here. So this is a another style of painting that you can do if you want to go with more kind of specific um, tones, you know, darks to lights and lights to darks and everything in between, something real kind of more flowy with the water. If you want to come back in here when it dries and kind of hit some of these spots, you can. It 
looks like it's doing a different shade it, it is at the moment but if you just keep blending that in you know you can even add some water if it's too much keep blending it it's gonna come together with the shade that is already there and bring this higher with the white Switch up a brush here. Okay, just a little bit of red on that. <laughs> Everything can always be adjusted no matter how crazy it gets. So if there's other things you want to add, you can always go in and add. Maybe there's other life down here you want to add. Um, you can always do that. You could put like a jellyfish over here or, um, you know, mind your space. Maybe something off in the distance over there. Um, if you ever wanted to. And, um, you know, if you lose your lines, you know, just always put them back in there. This painting is it's pretty forgiving, um, so it gives you a lot of room to, to practice and, and to go over these points that I've, I've shown today. Make sure that you sign your painting with your initials, and if you're doing your edges, do every single edge, save the bottom for last. That way your canvas doesn't get stuck to the easel. And I put up a status a bit ago about um, I'm going to be switching up days here. So Monday will be the next uh, painting. I'm going to give everyone a chance to kind of save supplies and, and restock them and go over other videos if um, 
you know anybody missed them and trying to keep up so monday will be the next one um it'll also give me a chance to uh work on these and get them um as far as i want to get them beforehand and then i can give everyone you know i can keep up with quality work for you all <laughs> and um not uh run myself into a uh, rock and hard place so um monday will be the next one 3 30 uh it's gonna be a tiger and i'm gonna give some updates of what that's gonna look like um over the next few days so i will see everybody then thank you so much if you have questions let me know um if you need help with anything on here let me know and i will see you all very soon